Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know I took an exquisite X5, a 50-foot catamaran, and sailed it from Cape Town, South Africa, across the equator, all the way to the Caribbean. It was an amazing adventure, but this episode's gonna be a little different. It's not gonna be the story of our passage and how we had some nice sunny days and some really, really windy, blustery days. It's gonna be a very detailed tour, top to bottom, of the Exquisite X5 by Tomas Hamour, who is kind of the brainchild or the driving force behind the Exquisite X5. He knows this boat better than almost anyone. So he's gonna take you through a very detailed tour. Like I say, you're gonna look at the time and go, wow, that is a long episode. If you're interested in buying an Exquisite, or if you're interested in buying any other catamaran and you want to compare all that this boat has compared to the one you're thinking about buying, this is an episode you certainly don't want to miss. I just think you're going to learn so much from this one hour episode that it's going to make your buying decision easier. Trust me. In fact, if you are serious about buying a catamaran, I bet you're going to watch this episode more than once. Before we get into this episode, I just want to thank A, my patrons, some of which who have been around since the beginning of the channel, long since before I was doing any of these transatlantic voyages, and in this particular voyage, a bunch of sponsors that jumped on board to help defer the costs of me flying halfway around the world and spending eight weeks away from my regular job. Thanks so much. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get on to this episode. Way anchor and hoist a sail. Welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. As you know, if you've watched this channel before, this is Tomas from Exquisite Yachts. We did a tour of your boat, hull number three, I believe, two years ago at the Annapolis Sailboat Show. Is that it right? It was three, correct. Hull number, hull number three, yeah. Well, now we're on hull number nine in the Atlantic Ocean near Namibia. And we want to do a full tour of the boat inside and out while we're under sail. We're presently sailing right now with a, a parasailer. So why don't you show us the inside of the boat and then we'll go and take a look at the outside. Sounds cool. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Craig. Yeah. So. As Greg said, this boat is hull number nine, uh, just launched recently. This is the, the, the ladies' boat, boat we just launched. And uh, lots of things are pretty much the same as the previous boat that you've seen, with uh, some uh, little tweaks. All of our boats is a little bit of improvement, every boat a little bit improvement of the previous boats, as well as showing the owner has asked for some customization for this boat. So if you've seen the previous tour that Craig did uh, of the X5, you already know that our windows here, that uh, in this case the different, that is not like a boat show when you see other boats next to us, you look out and you see the ocean, but it's pretty neat. We don't have a sunny day, but it is what it is. Imagine that you're just in your bed and from your bed, the view that you have lots of natural light. Uh, the difference that you, right away that you could see, for example, the fabric color, is different that was uh, uh, Sean's personal preference uh, uh, obviously we can change any color of the uh, upholstery that you would like to have what we improved also here you have a television a fold-out TV that just slides out right here and obviously you have a 32 inch TV to watch from your bed uh, we improved the, the season system now we have the COI it's a koi uh, uh, combination output interface a uh, little neater, we made this board, already has uh, uh, the CNC routed in each uh, the space for every koi, but you see the installation is very, very neat. Everything is labeled everywhere. Here, how you can get to the fuse box, a little bit easier than on the previous model was. Everything is labeled again. This is the override for uh, the season. Uh, you could just, if you remember how it works, if one circuit fails, you just take out the fuse, pop it out, put it one position higher, one slot higher, and then you override the digital switching system. Uh, the rest is pretty much the same, oversized air conditioners, has international plug points, USB plug points. Maybe one thing that's new also is that uh, now we wired that the master cabin air conditioner, if you go with the lithium-ion battery upgrade, then uh, the master cabin air conditioner is wired through the inverter. Uh, we have a bigger 4 kilowatt inverter and now uh, you can run this master cabin air conditioner without running the generator. Uh, it's a limited amount of time or what we do if you power manage the boat you can run it overnight. If you, if you run the generator in the evening, charge your batteries uh, and cool down the cabin with all the air cons running and when you go to sleep you, you, can, uh, you can turn off the, the generator and keep this air conditioner running overnight and it keeps the cold. Very nice. Okay. Uh, if you come this way, it's the same layout here. We didn't do any changes, which is pretty neat here. If you see the shown as here an iPad, which the iPad actually you can move pretty much anywhere on the boat. It's now connected to the Garmin uh, display, uh, uh, the main navigation station outside. 
which is pretty neat. Uh, I'll be sailing with the parasailer with very, very little wind. If you see the apparent wind is only six knots and our GPS speed is about six knots. So we're doing the same as the apparent wind does. It, it's, oh it's pretty neat, but there's really not much wind out there. Yeah. Uh, this way is the same. Uh, this lock for the sliding door. So if you want privacy, you can slide its door and then, and then you have the entire cabin just for yourself. Obviously under passage, you just lock it down here with a little lock. Uh, the storage under the steps uh, uh, the same. If you remember that this opens up lots of storage there as well. As you know, the concept of this boat, because it's a, it's a cruising boat uh, to sail around the world, uh, its storage is very important, but also accessibility. Very important and all the wiring, all the plumbing is accessible in the entire boat. Everything is replaceable, tanks, uh, engines, generator, everything has space to come out and the new one can go in. And you have the step-in wardrobe with the, I'll show a little bit Sean's personal stuff, sorry Sean, but you have his and hers uh, 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 hanging lockers, both sides, quite a lot of space, mm -hmm. and all these are deep cabinet, I don't want to go through all his stuff, but it's a, it's a proper step-in wardrobe as you see with the air conditioning blows in right here. If you go to the master cabin bathroom, all these are vanity storages, so all here as well, so lots of space. Obviously freshwater uh, electric flush toilet, a nice big shower with all the, all the beam of the hole, as well as lots of place to, to put uh, uh, toilet trees. And behind the shower you have the, the laundry room with a washer dryer and we even put some shelves above there. Pretty good place for it. Okay, as you see, uh, the finish is all around the boat. This is real wood finish. It's a real wood veneer, uh, a lime washed oak. And then we use our in-house upholstery that you've probably seen at the Phoenix Marine Factory tour that uh, how Franklin, our upholsterer, does this stitching all around the boat, which is pretty neat. And now you have a little more information that mm -hmm. you see in the factory tour and then uh, uh, how, we, how we do things. Okay. okay, so I think this is for this cabin. Okay, now we're in the guest cabin. This is the one I'm sharing with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got the lived-in look. Probably the first thing you will you will see here this wooden divider that uh, Rudolf neatly uh, came up with the idea because uh, you already know that this passage, uh, uh, Craig and Steve sharing this cabin, and you didn't want them to hold hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, they didn't want to I hold appreciate hands. Appreciate that. So uh, Rudolf came up with this wooden divider which is strapped around the mattress. And it's removable, obviously, after the trip. So then it's a it's a proper double double bed. Uh, what I didn't mention on the other cabin that all the windows has uh, very nice uh, quality ocean air blinds. All of the windows is more and easier to get to from here. You see, and it's magnetic on the bottom, so it stays in place and neatly hides away. Uh, this cabin doesn't have the TV as, as Sean's cabin, but we provision for that. It's optional, and you have the same uh, uh, sea zone. Uh, system right here very easily great access easily accessible but at the same time it's hidden so you don't need to get to it all the time lots of cabinetry storage space everywhere and then uh, our signature also these bathrooms not to lose all the natural light from these windows you got uh, these acrylic uh, bathrooms where got, got a very decent sized shower and then a door that works both ways for the shower or for the toilet it's pretty much the same that you've seen in the previous boat, uh, in the moon number three, we didn't do much modifications here. If something works really well, we didn't change it. We only did some improvements either for client's request or either when we got some feedback from our, our existing owners that, oh, I would like this something a little differently. And then we worked on it and the next boat was improved for Like it. Sean asked for more solar, so you made a longer roof. We'll get to that on exactly. the other side, but there are some changes to this boat over Hull there were, yeah. Sean mainly did lots of um, uh, customization and electronics. Uh, this boat has forward looking, side looking sonars, uh, uh, upgraded the chart plotter, lots of lots of upgraded electronics and extended solar, but I will show it to you uh, later when we get there. Okay, let's go to the other cabin. Okay, okay this is the, the third cabin, the port forward one. Uh, uh, this cabin would be a little bit smaller than the rest of the cabins, but it still has the same uh, size uh, bathroom exactly as the other guest cabin. So in this configuration, you have uh, in the port two, uh, two guest cabins uh, uh, with ensuite showers and uh, toilets. 
and it has similar cabinetry like on the on the wall it's pretty the... much it's all storage here all storage here all storage on the side here there's also a big under the bank bunk uh, uh, and then you have the same season equipment here as each one the season is divided into four zones in the four uh, corners of the boat to reduce wiring that's why we can save a lot of weight as well uh, uh, in the wiring because it's distributed uh, uh, um, switching cool so now we are in the the main salon and galley uh, we have a pretty cool three frigo fridges. These are made in Italy, and uh, we have a standard fridge with two drawers uh, freezer. Now this uh, freezer has. Let me just show you quickly. It has a built-in. <laughs> it, now it's be used for food for a long passage, but uh, this is a built-in ice maker here that you can obviously turn off the ice maker function and then use it as a freezer when you need more space for long pa passages like this. Now. This is standard and uh, uh, we have another fridge outside, a cockpit fridge, also made by the same company with three frigo. And uh, the, the uh, believe it or not, Sean bought a, an extra big freezer for this trip, which is now became the cockpit seat outside there. But uh, somehow they did the provisioning that everything fit in these with three frigo fridges and freezers and that only holds the beer now. The beer, it's a so beer fridge. I don't know how they did that but the, the, but pretty well done or the fridge is amazingly the good. They're very <laughs> big inside, bigger than it looks from the outside. Uh, Sean's addition, that's his personal touch, uh, a pretty cool uh, bread making machine which we use every day actually. Yeah. To, this morning is my turn to make bread, my wife would be very <laughs> proud of me. Uh, that's very handy long passages or even if you just live on the uh, on anchorage in in uh, in the islands it's also yeah. super bread can be expensive on some of these islands yeah. so and it's, it's it's you always have fresh bread and yeah. nothing better than wake up in the morning for the for smell sure. fresh bread. this is also new we have a professional tool cabinet okay with all the assorted tools uh, we set this up for Sean with everything that we believe that you would need all the tools at different drawers it goes quite a bit more. One more door right here. Opa. Wasn't in place, so now you got all the Makita power tools as Everything, well. Everything's got a spot. Yeah. It's a really neat setup because on a boat, you know, you will have to fix things and uh, and uh, and this is a uh, this is very easy when you get to the when you get to get to fix things. Here behind you have another more storage this is more tools grammo for example and other stuff that we have here it's it's all set up and besides this we even have more uh, 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 we supply several boxes for the spare parts there's one box for engine spare parts another box for water maker spare parts generator spare parts we have for rigging uh, uh, for cabinetry the hinges push buttons the uh, electrical uh, Pretty much, you got a box for all the spares that you might need on the boat. We even supply entire, like pumps, for example. There's grey water pumps, fresh water pumps, bilge pumps. All these pumps, you can get repair kits, but it's much more complex to take a pump apart and repair with the, with the, with the kit than just we supply the entire pumps, a replacement pump. So it's usually very simple to replace mm -hmm. a pump. Mm -hmm. So you replace it, take the old one, and when you have time, you fix it, or, right. or you get send it out to be fixed, or the warranty, whatever, and then and then you have a spare on board. Cool. Now you mentioned yeah. at the Annapolis show before. Is this still true? You could you could sub that out for another fridge, right? Yes, that's still an option. Uh, you can have this either uh, a tool cabinet or either an additional one more with three frigo uh, freezer or fridge. It's okay. uh, your choice, and that fits in the same place. But obviously, you cannot have both, so either or. And these fridge freezers, you can change the temperature to make one a fridge instead of a freezer. No, you have to that's decide when freezer. you buy it. You know, this oh, is okay. this is fridge on the top. I show you a little bit. I don't know how organized this is, but oh, it's full because we're. <laughs> On it. Yeah, go. so this is fridge. Yeah, and then the bottom top drawers are freezer, freezer. and ice maker. And then this one you can decide: that's you want a freezer or you want it a fridge. Right. And that's how the size, the compressor is sized. So for if it. you're an owner who didn't want to get that, you know, an extra fridge out there, you mm -hmm. could just add that and not have the tools in. Exactly. The extra freezer there is not a bad idea actually if you live aboard full time or you have a bigger family because then you can do much big provisioning uh, where it's cheaper or get better selection and then you go to the islands. And then also it becomes a seat. We made a, 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 a little cushion on top as you can see right. and, uh, and, and that's how it works pretty well. Okay. Now in this area you have the television as well. That's also standard. The TV itself is standard but Sean again upgraded uh, uh, with the sound bar on top of it. So you have a, a pretty decent sound uh, quality in this, in the master cabin. Excellent.
Okay. Yep. Obviously some oh. fishing gear. Pretty serious <laughs> fishing gear. That, into the fishing. That uh, repaired for the trip. As you can see, let, let them continue the galley then, because we started the fridges. So the galley, again, is very similar as you've seen the previous boat. I'm not sure on that boat if you had the dishwasher or not. We have a dishwasher built in here that's standard. It's running, as you can see, there's two minutes left of the cycle. Mm -hmm. It's a nice Bosch dishwasher. And that runs just off the battery. You don't need the generator running for that? You don't need the generator. We have a four kilowatt inverter as standard. So that can handle quite a lot of load. If you see, we have, a, besides the bread maker, there is a coffee makers, an air fryer, a big toaster. So these are pretty big loads and all this can be handled from the inverter. That's great. Obviously you don't run everything at the same time, but <laughs> up to four kilowatts you're, you're, you're safe. Also, this is a, a new addition from Sean that because he's planning to cruise with his family in the Pacific Islands, he wanted even more redundant system. What if you run out of uh, propane or you cannot cook on the gas stoves because the barbecue outside and this works with propane. So he split the four burner propane to have two induction and two uh, gas burners. And that's how he has even more redundancy. Right. Uh, the oven is the same, what we used before is a Bosch. Uh, uh, this incorporates microwave as well as conventional oven, two in one. Now you have spice cabinetry up here, pretty neat, easy accessible. Obviously for cooking you have a light as well as, a, as a, the other switches for extraction. So when you're cooking inside, and, and we just did that this morning, that the, the, it was really cold, so we closed the, closed the doors, then we could still cook inside because it didn't make smell inside because of the extraction. Now, if probably people remember our, our nice uh, drawer here, so I'm gonna pull it from here so you can see. It goes all the way, all the way back. And if you see how much weight is in there right now, because yeah, cool. this is, if you look in there, it's very deep. So that, look at how deep this goes and all the stuff that's inside we it. We must have 50 pounds in here. Yeah. Right? Maybe women would not be happy about this organization there, but. <laughs> hey, this is not a show guys. This is the level board boat right now. Yeah, uh, so here you have uh, the sinks and this is a the little bit new, I think the, the Korean countertop as we did it. So if now we, you're, you're, you can use this is, as drying dishes here, or if the water just spells water, the water just all the way gonna go and drain back in here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a, a nice mixer tap that moves around, as well as you have a drink water tap. Now, it is also standard now on every boat that uh, the drinking water, as well as the ice maker water, comes to, uh, goes through a carbon filter. So even if you not, when you, you make your own water all the time, it's always easy, it's, it's perfectly fine for drinking. But let's say you, you put uh, uh, water in your tanks in a marina, uh, then it's good to filter at least the ice and the drinking water. The rest is all cabinetry. There's tons of cabinetry all around. Okay, so the rest is all cabinetry all around, underneath, all the way there. Okay, so now again the salon. You have uh, uh, the, the fabric, again, that was a personal choice of the owner. And if you peek out from the window, you will see the parasailer flying, which is also pretty neat. In these yeah. dead downwind conditions, that's a good sail to fly. Not too many boat tours while you're sailing. Yeah. I don't know how much you remember this table. I think hole number three was the first one yeah. that we did this table that we call the transformer which folds out this way, this way, this goes down like this and you do the same obviously the opposite side and then this becomes the center piece right. so and this how it becomes a full uh, dining table awesome. which could come handy when you sail in very high latitudes in cold weather which we're doing right in, the, in the last <laughs> few days and it's quite cold outside and it works well Cabinetry there too. Okay, yeah, here you can see also the more cabinetry of the island unit, lots of food. <laughs> and, uh, and then under you see the, as the, 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 the water passing by is our escape hatch that Rudolf designed it to have it uh, like uh, a feature of the boat. Here at the nav station, as you can see, a little bit like the Enterprise, <laughs> lots of computers and iPads and other stuff. Uh, I walk you through a little bit what is what. Okay, right now here you have the other iPad also uh, connected to your navigation. So this becomes your complete home station 
uh, uh, doubled up, the same as what you have outside. You have full control and monitoring here through the Garmin system. It's, it's a very, very neat system. All what we use for navigation electronics is Garmin because uh, we're very happy with the after-sales service, what they do, and, and super happy with their systems. That integrates very well also with the C-Zone system that we're using because uh, they, they, uh, you can connect the two networks together and get all the information is doubled up so it's a double layers of security what it gives us we have the digital switching on on one ipad which we supply with the boat right now from here as you can see what lights are on or if you want to turn on a light for example you push there this cockpit lights and if you want to turn it on now the cockpit light turns on and it even tells you that that circuit right now the cockpit lights how much current it draws 1.4 amps the led lights in the cockpit Quite a lot of lights out there and you can turn it off as well obviously you can monitor uh, uh, and control all the switching from here as well as program different moods on this and this works wirelessly now if this would fail the wireless system would fail that's where the garmin comes in place because the garmin is a uh, wire it's connected through the network uh, uh, and it's wired obviously so from the Garmin display out at the helm and obviously from another iPad that's connected to that one you can you can you can have access to the same switching system uh, what you have here okay here besides that you have another Garmin wind instrument uh, we fit this inside here because if you let's say navigating from inside obviously you can get the data from the display as well but uh, let's say you're in an anchorage for a week and uh, and uh, or more you turn off your navigation instruments you don't want that running all the time so the, your multi-function display is all turned off you can see that this unit turned on here so in the anchorage you always see what is your wind doing or or what's your what's the depth uh, for example if you if you uh, uh, on an anchorage you're you're swinging around it comes very handy we usually have this on almost all the time yeah. uh, Right now he has it set up uh, his computer with the predict wind uh, uh, wind forecast that is comes actually all that data comes through the Iridium Go which we have a set up there. Now the Iridium Go this is the, the, the head unit of it but it's connected to an external antenna that is up on the spreader so it has much better reception uh, for it. What else I could show you obviously you have the water maker we got uh, the fully automatic spectral water maker which is just uh, actually a push of a button. You can you can turn it on from here. You can tell it how much water you want to make, how many hours or how many gallons water you want to make, and start it. That's all. And it does a cycle. Once uh, the cycle is finished, uh, it automatically fresh water flushes itself and uh, and uh, and then goes in a timer. That if you wouldn't start it for five days, it's automatically fresh water flushes itself again. That's smart. Generator control, you can just start it from here. We use uh, Fisher Panda uh, uh, inverter technology generators that are vari variable speed generators. Uh, fusion stereo system. Uh, also lots of USB and other ports, air conditioners, and the master wall display here. For example, you can see the solar, uh, this is your lithium ion battery bank. And this is the solar bank one and two. Now you see it's totally foggy out there. It, it, uh, there is no sun at it's all. Foggy as hell. Yeah, and and still you do on one bank you do 10 amps and 15 amps on the other bank. But uh, that's altogether like 25 amps you're doing right now. But but we've seen it uh, up to 110 amps charge coming in just from the solar, right. uh, which is pretty pretty neat. Okay, so uh, a couple of words on the wiring. If you see our systems. We very much spend time and energy to make our wiring perfect. So if you see very, very organized, very neat, everything is labeled. Uh, all the systems uh, we got in the user manual, we supply it digitally uh, in the Vassal Vanguard app, as well as we supply in the user manual. Every equipment is labeled, every wire is labeled on both ends. In the wire uh, identification, you will see the color coding, the, the wire gauge, uh, the labeling, and um, where it origi originates and where ends uh, each, each wire. So, in every equipment as well. So, all that uh, is uh, in the user manually supply. So, it's very, very easy to identify and, and, and find what's doing what and where is it going. Awesome. Okay, so here we are in the cockpit. 
uh, you won't see many changes here. We still have the very nice table uh, with the world map engraved in it. Uh, you have uh, this nice area, which became actually my bad for this passage, uh, because you know that uh, that the guys are inside. They already took all the beds. So in this five-day passage, the Dharma accompanied them to Namibia to make sure everything works. This is where I sleep which in this weather condition would be terrible if we wouldn't have these enclosures but luckily these enclosures are lifesavers because uh, uh, right now you see it's only the mesh uh, that's put down obviously this panel is not put down but there is the full umbrella enclosure so you, you can enclose it completely all around and we did this in actually cape town that we enclosed completely and run the heating inside from the air conditioners and we could completely warm up this area that outside outside was really cold and inside we were all t-shirts having dinner so it, it, it this enclosure is super important and it's neat because you can you can if you see look it from the outside you can fold this up this layer or or then you can put up the entire thing and hides away and there is a flap that goes around and then it goes inside this recess so if i put up the whole thing i can make it totally hide away in the recess so it's very very neat and organized this table this is right now my bed but uh, at the same time it can be converted to a table it comes up uh, in a telescopic leg and then obviously without this cushion it becomes a second table other cool feature on this boat that i don't think uh, boat three had that time is the flexity decking now this flexity decking is it just makes the boat look more elegant it's uh, it's very nice on the feet uh, and and looks more classy mm -hmm. uh, we try to choose the color that it's the lightest color with the with the white caulking because uh, what happens with all the different deckings materials they, they they become quite hot on the direct sunlight so we try to look for the least uh, least uh, the lightest color that gets the least hot possible in this area you have a korean countertop with a <laughs> no <laughs> normally this so, not, I didn't so get, what? Uh, no no normally this is a, a sink if you work on the engines or you're fishing and the dirty stuff you don't want to go through the galley and get everything dirty so that would be a sink for that purposes obviously a little bar fridge for carrots and then <laughs> and then here you have a bar with uh, with uh, led lights and then a logo light every light on the boat is on the digital switching so everything is programmable dimmable uh, also an addition for Sean's boat we did a, a remote control which is a waterproof control that he carries in the dinghy and when he comes to the boat uh, with the dinghy after a restaurant dinner he just uh, pushes arriving to the boat and then uh, we program it the underwater lights and the cockpit light turns on so he finds his, his logo light comes up so he finds his boat when he comes back and That's it's awesome. and it's all that the same when you leave the boat you don't have to go every cabin turn off the cabin fans the the lights and all that you just go in the dinghy you push i'm leaving the boat in the remote control and then everything turns off except uh, the anchor light that you have another switch on the remote for that oh i forgot to put on the anchor light you can just do that uh, from the remote as well uh, and obviously uh, systems that you need on like fridges and bilge pumps and all that stays on but all this stuff that you won't need while you're not on board will turn off cool. if you walk this way out here you if you remember on the previous uh, one is the same uh, story here we have these uh, benches that you can adjust the backrest at different angles on both sides electric david system that uh, it has a radio remote control to lift up your tender Normally, we would fit uh, uh, an AB tender, uh, which is uh, which is an inflatable rib. Uh, this one is uh, Sean's uh, personal choice. is the OC tender from New Zealand. This is a rigid uh, old tender, as you can see. So we had to like custom create some blocks and and to, to put it up, but it's snug. It doesn't move anywhere. We have here the barbecue, uh, also a, a very decent uh, Australian brand. Works really well. And if you look up, that's the biggest change that you see. This whole extension starting from here all the way to the F, all this piece was added specifically designed for Sean's request to be able to add more solar panels. So now we doubled up the solar capacity. The standard, what we have is 900 watts, and now we added another 900 watts. So with this option, it's 1.8 kilowatt total solar. And as I said, we can go up to 120 amps charge coming in from these two uh, 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 solars. 
we've seen it up to 110, we've seen it happening. Mm. 120 would be the maximum of it. Mm. Uh, if you come this side, you see the flexi teak again. It's uh, it's very neat, uh, exactly fitting for uh, custom design for for our steps and uh, and for fittings. They have the cutout for for every hinge and uh, and locks. And now uh, the other feature that's also Sean's addition is the Watt and C hydro generator, which apparently we forgot to put in the water right now <laughs> which we could perfectly do with uh, sailing we, actually it really starts working at higher speeds and, and we don't have much wind at all so at these speeds it's probably won't generate too much but higher speed it works really well and i show you the engine rooms at least this one here and sean opted for the uh, fishing uh the fishing pole holders too huh? yeah actually that's uh, i could show you that it, it works for two ways, for fishing rods as well as uh, Rudolf custom designed for Sean a fish cleaning station here. Oh, okay. So that fits in with two legs, fits in here yeah. uh, during the during the trip. That you guys, when you catch a fish, you will see it because okay. he puts it. It's foldable, and then you can just re uh, push it in here, and it, it's uh, a fish cleaning station here where you can work. That's awesome. Yeah, it's also a custom design. Rudolf is very good. He's doing custom designs. Okay, so now what you can see here, one new thing is the lid by itself, okay, the, the engine room lid uh, before was just one, one, one uh, molding with uh, everything glued on the bottom, but now we made it double, if you see this inner, inner molding piece, right. uh, it's two layers, so we recessed into it uh, the, uh, the soundproofing as well as the seal, it's, it's just a much, much nicer uh, uh, and more organized setup engine room is Jan Mars or 80 horsepower common rail engines I truly believe these are the best uh, best engines that you can get for these boats in the market available uh, each engine has its own uh, alternator which charges the 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 starter battery which is in there which also a step to go down and as you can see there is an additional second alternator on it that's a master watt high output alternator which has an external controller and we fit those as part of the package for the lithium-ion battery upgrade because the lithium-ion batteries has a very very high uh, charge acceptance rate uh, you can charge them really quickly that's why we fit these big alternators with the external controllers that can uh, be programmed to for the uh, the chemistry of the lithium-ion batteries and charge them really really quickly uh, the soundproofing is all around the engine room uh, uh, automatic fire extinguisher uh, fuel transfer pump uh, that you can control from the ipad back and forth uh, what else? Oh, we have an oil changer. That's a new thing also. You see on the wall the Jetsco oil changer? Right. That's connected on the starboard side, connected to the engine oil pan and also to the, uh, we can connect it to the sail drive. So to, to change the oil is really easy because you just, con uh, con you just turn the valve for the engine, get an empty can, put the hose in it and pump out the oil, goes into the empty can and then you put the same hose in a new can, reverse the valve, uh, reverse the, the pump and, and then pumps back the brand, fresh oil uh, and it's really just a breeze to change the oil. Okay, so here on this side, in, uh, and I'm not going to show the other engine room, it's very similar to the other one, here you have our also signature is our shower, so when you come out from a swim you have a nice freshwater hot shower right here, an overhead shower. Okay, so now at the helm station uh, the cool features now of this, probably I think on boat num number three then when we started, that we extended this, this top here, uh, uh, now extends all the way here. It's very easy to put it down because you just unzip it here and then it slides down on these Harken tracks all the way back. And you have open and you have good visibility for the sails as well as you have it open. This, uh, maybe this window is new, I'm not sure we had it. The other good feature now with this, it follows the curve of the boat. As you see these snaps here, we have a full enclosure that completely encloses the side. And, and in, in rough weather, you can be totally protected inside here. Uh, other, but this is an addition too, as you see, all our lines and uh, uh, led to back to these two electric winches and everything is hidden with our standard sails. Okay, so the two head sails, the stealth tacking jib, and the uh, screecher that we have are all that here. The reefing lines are all that here. This setup, what you see, is was an optional thing that we specifically made for the parasailer. 
Okay, this this uh, this is an optional sail, not a standard sail, an optional downwind sail, and this is how we rigged it up. So also all the lines now, all the five lines, it uses the halyard, it uses the two uh, guy lines, also the two sheets. Now all the five lines are in here uh, at the electric winches for the power sail as well. So again, the idea that the couple should be able to handle it. Uh, uh, themselves. And you're completely enclosed on the sides, the back, and you've got a, an actual windshield here. People may not notice that. But... Yeah, th this uh, this is a, 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 a proper windshield. We only use, as you see in the factory tour, we only use real glass on the boat. This is real glass as well. And at the helm, you got all the lines, without exception, all of them, including the three reef lines. Everything is led back here to the two electric winches, which is on foot switches. So we are hands uh, free to work with the lines. And let me show you another thing, also an upgrade. This is also an upgrade that Sean did. Look at that. He has, oh, a, so cool. he has a camera up on the mast. And, and you see the parasailer flying from the top of the mast with the sock uh, uh, sitting there. Pretty, pretty neat. Very cool. Now this is a, a, a high definition camera also made uh, by Garmin. As you see all our navigation equipment I mentioned before that we use Garmin. And this is quite neat because Imagine we will angle this camera a little more forward. So when, when he will arrive to the Caribbean and you go uh, shallow areas and reefs, having this angle with a high definition camera from above in front of the boat will help you navigate quite a bit. Uh, with the side view and forward view and all those sonars that he has, plus a camera uh, facing a little bit forward of the boat, high definition would be quite a safe deal going through and navigating in shallow waters and reefs much better angle than what you yeah, have from here. That. Yeah. Uh, Jan Mar, this is I think quite new as well. We got uh, uh, electronic throttle controls for the Jan Mar engines and uh, digital panels. Now I'm going to show you quickly here because the, the very cool thing with these digital panels, obviously you can customize the screen of each panel what you want, but the really nice thing with this is for example that you can see how much fuel you're using and how much fuel you're burning at every moment engine hours obviously so with the fuel rate you can really easily calculate your range and uh, and and we've seen it that uh, it at 1900 rpm we were using one gallon an hour on an engine so it, it's really fuel efficient as well for long distance cruising we have automatic fire extinguishers each engine rooms if they would go off then obviously they cut automatically the ignition for both the engines and the generators for safety purposes Oh, these are backup systems for the Yanmar. So if the electronic throttle control fails, you can you can have the control the throttle from here. This is like a backup layer. After yeah. that, we tried to build a boat that everything has backups. Probably from the Garmin, you might remember that we fit this grid here, which is a total uh, manual control for the touchscreen display. So again, if your hands are wet or rainy or salt water spray on it, uh, it's much nicer to use this than the touchscreen itself. You have a composite wheel and the also nice feature that uh, uh, this storage locker for all the ropes now a little messy there <laughs> because for the video we just throw everything away but uh, it's very nicely hides away the ropes first of all it's a good storage secondly the ropes are not out on the the sun and don't get uh, the uv damage that's where all the ropes are hidden all around the boat uh, yeah from here these are all could be controlled from the digital switching system as well as uh, from the ipad or you can control it from here let's say you go here switching and you have all these switches you can control every light dim every light everything on the boat same as these switches we just put out some of the switches that let's say are more important and you don't want to go in a menu and switch screens just to get to the switch for example deck flood light so this at night when you're sailing it, it, it led lights from the spreaders down that that shine up the entire boat so you see what your sails are doing at night if you have to work on that that's a very quick easy one uh, obviously important one the bilge pumps in the engine rooms build pu bilge pumps in the in the main uh, uh, bilges in the holes uh, the engine parallel and generator parallel are also very important these works are uh, uh, if let's say your engine battery dies 
and you cannot start your engine you don't even have to go to the engine room you can just from here parallel the two starter batteries the port engine and the starboard engine starter batteries with the push of a button now let's say the generator battery fails then you can push the generator parallel and parallel that to the starter batteries so it's, it's two levels of backup if you lose a battery you have two other because it, altogether it's three starter batteries generator port engine starboard engine each one has its own battery and each one could be paralleled by a push of the button as a safety feature okay. Uh, leaving and arriving vessel, these are programmed modes, uh, which I just explained the same what you can do from the remote control, it, it switches the same thing. Let's say you're in the marina and you're leaving the boat, you don't have to go through everything, you just push leaving vessel, everything will shut down. But your fridges and yeah. your, your, your essential, stuff. essential mm -hmm. stuff stays. Stay, stay obviously the arrive when you get back to your boat, you just push that button. Yes. Okay, as you can see, the boat is really, really stable and uh, the decks are, besides now the parasailer is up, but if the, there's no parasailer with the standard sail, the deck is completely clean, absolutely no lines, very easy to walk through. You got solid railings as well as good handholds. So you got very good uh, uh, day and safe way to move around. But on top of that, obviously you have jack lines. So if you, if you would be running on the deck, you just hook it up to your life jacket and then you can go back and forth safely. So if, if you see, you will remember from the previous one, we only use uh, real glass on the windows. It's laminate glass, a very, very nice installation. There's no caulking around it and it's very, very safe. Rainwater collectors on both sides. We have little 3D printed inserts that actually during the trip you can probably, you with its rains, you will put it in and you can film it. How it works, you take this out, the little insert goes in here, creates a little dam and this sits on top. So it will be like this and then the water goes right in there. Lots of storage space up here and uh, uh, for example that storeroom, that's where, where that locker, sail locker where the parasailer lives and that entire big sail when you pull down the sock it just goes straight inside that locker and then you can pull it out the whole sock it pulls out from there also very neat and easy lots of storage here as you see all the lines uh, are hidden and here you can see the the solar panels now these these six panels here recessed into the coach roof these are standard as the standard 900 watt and it, uh, these ones are adjustable you can put it towards the sun at different angles and then on the back there is the other six that was the addition for this boat as an as an optional and now we offer it as an option additional 900 watt panels so the standard sail setup is the self-packing jib and uh, and the screecher this is a usually a perfect setup because it covers every wind angle that you need to be sailing and where you will be sailing and because both of these, all the lines are at the helm, it's just so easy to use. Uh, one person sails this boat alone. You've seen it already on previous episodes that you came past it, although there's no wind, but hopefully you guys will have more wind during this trip that you can show more about this. We've already had a day when it was 30, 35 knots, right? So, oh, that's, and I got some footage of that. That's true, we had uh, 30, 35 for an entire day, so it was a pretty rough seas. And uh, I think uh, uh, you've seen that the boat behaved really, very really well. Very comfortable, very quiet, very stable. For the uh, sailing uh, hardware, we use Harken. We try to use top brands of everything that's on the boat. Uh, 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 try to use the brands that have the best after sales service, the highest quality of equipment, and that's why we use Harken. And all our equipment is quite oversized, I would say, for the size of the boat. So you see the, the one uh, Harken 100 blocks, the, these have the Torlon uh, uh, cylinders, rollers in there. Uh, if you look at our, our mainsail uh, car system, okay, thank you. <laughs> the mainsail car system, uh, uh, it's, it's really, really massive. I would say almost an overkill for this size of a boat. But really like this because uh, you know you know that it's, it's strong, you know that you will be able to reef this massive sail, uh, 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 square top mainsail, even in rough conditions, you know, you won't get stuck, your cars won't get stuck, it's, it's all reliable equipment uh, with a long, long history. And what size is your mainsail? It's 100 square meters, okay. over a thousand square foot, I don't know exactly, yeah. so, but it's, it's over big. a thousand square foot, it's, it's a big mainsail and it's square top as well, so uh, the sails are all, all uh, made by North Sails, and are, are called Grey Norlam. It's a laminate sail, cruise laminate sail. So very, very lightweight, 
but at the same time holds uh, holds its uh, its shape for a long time. This is another very piece, nice piece of equipment from Harken. This is a snatch block uh, uh, that he bought, and then we, we can use this snatch block that you know even when you have a line out, you can still put put this on, and then with a soft shackle attached to a cleat and change angles of of your sheets. Pretty neat equipment. So I just mentioned earlier that we use very uh, uh, almost oversized uh, uh, hardware for sailing hardware. You see our furlers, both of them the Mark IV Harken furlers. These are really, really massive, very reliable furlers. So as you say now, we're sailing with the parasailer and uh, very important for our speed, but mainly in light wind conditions like this, that uh, we have uh, folding propellers. We use the Gori three-bladed Gori folding propellers and we love these props because they are very simple and reliable. They don't need much maintenance at all and uh, they probably add more than enough of our cruising speed under sail, which is obviously long passages. It, it, it adds up quite a bit that, that, that one knot per hour uh, uh, extra speed. And Glorious, great propellers, but uh, I mean, this is one thing that is very hard for me to show you. So probably Craig can boat. put up some something yeah. about it. But we're doing about half the speed of the wind right now with this parasol, right? Yeah, yeah, we're doing half the wind speed. Straight downwind, so that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that downwind, straight half the wind speed. Maybe a little more than half, but yeah. uh, but because uh, obviously that downwind, your apparent wind drops down so much. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That's as efficient. much as you can do with this sail. So a couple of uh, words that I would uh, like to talk about are after sales service and uh, and warranties why we are different from from the other brands uh, uh, these boats are really really complex and there are uh, so many different components and equipment that we do not manufacture we just install so let's say the generator the engines the water maker all these pumps appliances ice maker chargers batteries etc so many components we do not manufacture these uh, and we cannot give a warranty on these ourselves. These are so-called uh, component warranties. Uh, this is the same with all the other manufacturers uh, uh, that uh, the build boats that um, they, they, these are the component, not the manufacturers own warranties. We just can give warranty on uh, what we do uh, of the build uh, 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 installations and the build quality and the workmanship. We give two years full warranty on that and then five years on structural. Now our, our difference to other boat yards, I would say the biggest uh, 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 what sets us apart from them is that if you have a component warranty issue, let's say you have an engine problem or a transmission problem, uh, most manufacturer would just tell you go to Yanmar or Volvo or whoever is your engine manufacturer and deal with them directly because it's their warranty. Now what we do differently is uh, we have uh, on our own website an owner's support login for every of our owners, each one of our owners has their own login and password. Uh, in the moment they have a problem, doesn't matter if it's a component or any other issues, they can just uh, uh, type in their problem, whatever problem they have. Uh, they can upload photos, they can upload uh, 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 additional documentation or whatever necessary. In the moment they hit enter, our entire technical team receives an email about the claim. So we all of us can look at it, we internally discuss what would be the best way to, uh, to help this owner to solve the problem. And even if it's a component warranty, we take it up with our suppliers. We start dealing with it, we help to make happen with all the service, even if it's a, a, a water maker or generator engine problem that we didn't manufacture, we still help sort this out because we have much more leverage obviously than, than an end user and owner would start with a front desk, you know, with a call. Uh, to make things even easier for our owners, we use a, a software called Vessel Vanguard. We, this is uh, supplied on the, on the iPad uh, of each boat. This is how it looks like for this boat. This has all the equipment uh, uh, uploaded. If you go in the equipment list, you see all the equipment uh, of the boat. Let's say we go drivetrain engines. Engine, you see the manufacturer, model, the serial number, of each engine and and propeller or or the sail drives uh, all the equip all the equipment information is there it also holds the holds the user manuals which is accessible now offline that we're in the middle of the ocean here and you have the user manual right here of each equipment it holds the warranty information of each equipment it even uh, uh, alerts you that your warranty will expire on some of these components and equipment super important to have now what it also does it tells you if there is a maintenance task that needs to be done 
uh, let's say in the overview in the first page, it already says upcoming tests for the next 30 days. Engine our uh, 50 hour maintenance. It tells you what maintenance you need to do, it logs it. And because it's cloud based, we access this information. I have, uh, uh, we can see the entire fleet, see what task they did, what they didn't do. Now, it's, it's very helpful, obviously, there are current owners to help them to maintain the boat better, but it, it, make, it pays a, a huge role in the after sales. When it comes, the boat, boat comes to resale, uh, yes. Because then uh, uh, we got this system, uh, which is, uh, we are just going to launch it uh, shortly, which will be our uh, certified pre-owned system from ex for Exquisite Yachts, uh, meaning that uh, we're trying to, to uh, to do our, uh, everything in-house. As the manufacturing goes in-house in the Phoenix Marine factory, we will do all the resale of our own boats in-house. Uh, if one of our owners wants to sell an exquisite yacht, instead of putting it on different websites or going to different brokers, they would just come to us. Uh, reason being, we will do a full factory checkup on every boat. Doesn't matter where the boat is, we send out our own team with a full factory checklist. We review the entire boat and we go, we, we, then the boat will go on the market as a factory certified boat with additional uh, uh, extended factory warranty. On a used boat, this I think I don't think anybody does similar thing or, or if they do, I just don't know about it, but it should be very rare, probably this. And uh, uh, it's very good for the new owner because they, they're gonna, the new buyer will buying a used boat with, with a full checkup, which is super important on used boats because there could be lots of hidden issues that, mm -hmm. that you won't find. That obviously our checklist will be so thorough that, uh, that we make sure that everything is in top shape uh, and condition. This Vessel Vanguard app will be a very good tool for that because we will have all the maintenance all history. The maintenance records exactly. Records, yeah. So that will be very helpful. And then for the, the, the owner, the existing exquisite owner will be very good because uh, we already have people waiting for used exquisite yachts. So we have a waiting list already uh, building up. So this, this way, the transactions can go very, very quick. It won't take months uh, uh, and, and even sometimes years to sell a boat. Uh, that is the case sometimes with other brands. We can do it quite quickly and obviously it will drive the price quite high up of our used boats because there is a demand for it. Already there is and uh, there is none on the market right now. Hopefully I think the first uh, uh, boat that we will have for resale will be our whole number one next year when they complete their full circumnavigation and uh, they will end their circumnavigation back to the origin to our factory at uh, Phoenix Marine Factory in Cape Town and uh, we will haul out that boat and do a full factory checkup on it and after that when everything's good we'll go on the market so so we, that co keeps all uh, in-house that's why we make make sure that our, our boats are in top shape not just when we launch them but during their entire lifespan of the boat and and a lot of go uh, uh, we're going to go in them in every resale as well to keep the, 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 the condition of the boats at top shape at all times. And peace of mind for the new owner because they'll have a new warranty from you guys. Absolutely, Excellent. absolutely. That's awesome. Thank okay, Tomas, thanks for the tour. This is a one of a kind for me taking a tour of a boat. Usually I do it at the Annapolis Sailboat Show, but here we are sailing. We're going to be sailing for what, about eight weeks on this boat and uh, getting to experience this great boat firsthand. Now I'll be able to say it not only looks nice, but it sails nice. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys are going to have some serious uh, uh, sailing weather because uh, again the last week that I was on board the idea was that we can go through everything but we didn't have much wind we had some do some motoring unfortunately but hoping that this long passage you can go try all yeah. the sails and and I know you got the, the lots of time the question that, that uh, the boat looks very nice but how does she sail I hope you can prove yeah, it now and show everybody that, that the boat does sail really really That's well great. we did the other day over 10 knots uh, speed uh, 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 and up to 13 I think 13, yeah, 13 or 14 13 yeah. 14 knots was our top speed yeah. yeah so it's not bad so I'm gonna be able to say that so it's gonna be uh, very complete if you watch the whole series you're gonna get to know a lot about this boat because I'm gonna be on it for six to eight weeks so stay tuned until next time this is Craig signing off Thank you. Ciao for now. Thank you. All right, just as an afterthought, this is, it's freezing cold where we are right now. It is so now we put down, because actually this is how we're sailing in the last four days, that we put up this enclosure. And as you can see, it completely encloses. So we yeah. can even heat this area when we're running the heaters right. inside. And that's why I can sleep in my little bed Yeah, there. he sleeps in this back room here. <laughs> that's where he sleeps. And this is where we eat. We try and eat out here, even though there is a table inside. But when we have it, the, the curtains down like this, it's actually quite nice and warm because we can 
heat in the inside of the cabin, and the heat just comes right out you in here. You can see in the guys how they how cold it is. Look at this is is the way they're cold. dressed. Deadliest catch. <laughs> There you go. I'll leave you with this beautiful scene that we're sailing in the future when it's sunny and not so foggy like in this episode. But I just thought I'd tell you that I am very, very impressed with this boat. Uh, I've obviously done the whole eight-week passage now, and this boat is amazing. If I could afford it, it would be definitely the boat that Janice and I would buy. Now, you've heard me gush on and on about this boat, and you're probably thinking I have some sort of vested interest in Phoenix Marine that builds it or, or exquisite yachts. And I just want to let you know I don't. I don't get anything if somebody buys one of these boats. I just really am a big fan of this boat. I've become friends with Tomas. I've met the team at Phoenix Marine that builds it. And they're all great people that seem super dedicated to building the absolute best boat they can for the dollar. I swear it is the best bang for the buck if you can afford it. Now, it's a little bit out of our price range, but that doesn't mean somebody who's watching this won't get an amazing boat if they buy one of them. Now, like I said in a previous episode, hull number eight was purchased by someone else and then they backed out the deal last minute. So the boat is done. It's in Florida. It's ready to be bought. I mentioned that in a previous episode and Tomas said they got so much interest from that one thing. So I'm going to do him a favor again. I'm going to let him say in something he sent to me in an email. I'm going to put it on the screen. You can pause it if you want to read it. But what it comes down to is hull number eight is still unspoken for, although there's a lot of interest, so act soon. And there's also an opportunity to go on a test sail, not only on boats that will be at the Annapolis Sailboat Show in October, but also this September in the Mediterranean. So if you're interested in doing a test sail with the Exquisite Yachts, definitely contact Tomas and his team. They'd be more than happy to show you around the, uh, one of the boats in real life and you can sail it just like I did. Well, maybe not for eight weeks like I did. That's, that's crazy, but you can go out for an afternoon. So that's hopefully you found it entertaining or informative. Probably this was more informative than entertaining because there was absolutely no story in this one. But yeah, if you enjoyed it, show the channel some love, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you can follow the rest of the journey across the Atlantic Ocean. And that's about it. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising and ciao for now. We anchor and hoist the sail.